he's got the same chance as Dillian White had, Derek Chisora. They've all got the same chance. The puncher's chance. I was very heavy. I look at myself on the videos last night. I was thinking like, wow, I'm even amazed how I come back. Shocking, really. Do you recognise yourself in those videos? No, I don't. When everyone thought I was done, I'm come back stronger than ever! <laughs> Tyson Fury, great to see you. How are we? I'm all right. How's, uh, how's life? It feels like I've got happy, happy Tyson Fury in front of me. Yes, I've had a tough, hard, long training camp, and now it's fight week. I'm very, very happy and can't wait to get in there and uh, target practice, as, as the suit says. Got me targets locked on in Garnu, and I've got the big right hand heat seeker. But you know, you're a target for him as well, right? Of course I am. I'm the biggest target of all, aren't I? And if he should land his missile on me, then there's going to be a dramatic effect worldwide. You got for a proper long, hard training camp for this. I one. did. Yes, I. Um, it's been 12 weeks in the making. I started with George 12 weeks ago. Um, eating the right foods and stuff, and I've been training, well, you know I train all year anyway, twice a day, um, six days a week, so I don't do anything different really, other than I'm more dedicated and more strict when I move into a training camp, and I usually don't train this long, I usually have about five, six weeks training camp for these fights, i.e. Wilder and Chisora and White, about five weeks and then a week rest. But for this thing, because I've been out of the ring so long again, been out of the ring nearly 12 months for a new fault of my own again. And it's been the story of your career, it's though. It's been right? the story Never. of my career. I'm like the person who's had the most inactivity. I probably had more inactivity than I've had activity. Mm. So it, it's, been a, it's been tough, you know. The uncertainty of this year, not knowing if I was going to fight one minute, I'm going to fight Usek in April at Wembley. Next minute, his arseholes fell out and he's run off. And then it's like, well, I'm never going to box again now. Mm. Is this it? Ten months later, all this has come out of the woodwork, and I don't only have one fight now, I have two. When everyone thought I was done, I'm come back stronger than ever! <laughs> when does that ever happen, that you've actually just got your next fight lined up? And by the way, it's the undisputed fight. It's, it's unbelievable, fight. isn't it? You know, well, everyone involved has done a, a fantastic, fantastic job, because everyone was like, oh, we wrote off, they ain't gonna fight no more, he's done, mm. ha 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 ha, Tyson's mm. out of boxing. But I'm like, uh, Terminator 2, I'll be back. <laughs> And it, it looks like it's put a spring in your step as well, by the way, because I, I saw your thing the other day saying that you're going to fight ten more times. I've got to speak with the magic man first, though, see if we can get a good deal going. Well, he's close by. He's, uh, are, you, are you nodding, Frank? I can't see. Uh, ten more fights. Are you, you're all good for that, yeah? Whatever he wants. Whatever he wants. We take one fight at a time, as always, but other than the niggling injuries what most boxers at my age would have. I'm in pretty good shape, you know. Mm -hmm. I haven't got a million miles on the clock and I've not had no dramatic damage to my face and stuff, so I'm pretty good, doing all right. And it makes me happy and that's the most important thing. Um, when I'm in training camp, I changed an interview yesterday and I think he got it spot on. I wasn't around him when he was saying that, I just watched it today, give him an extra view on his TV now. <laughs> Come on, Shane. So he said, Tyson's only happy when he's in camp, so he's probably going to box on until he's 50, but I don't know, it's like, I was born to do something, why, why take it away from me if I'm doing well, you know? If I'm doing what I need to do, it makes me happy, then who, who's anybody to say I can't do what I want to do? So, plenty of time left, I'm only just turned 35 and I'm fresh as a daisy, uh, fit as a fiddle, healthy as a trout. <laughs> Game is a pebble. <laughs> if, if, we, if we sit here today and we think about those 10 fights, because I know you keep an eye on, on everyone, the yeah. division, who's coming through, etc., etc. Yeah. Off the top of your head, who do you think the 10 fights are? Does it matter? We've, we've, we know it don't matter. You know, it's a Tyson Fury roadshow. Whoever, whoever, whenever, because if we, if we go to, I don't know, Australia, fight the Australian champion, go to Antarctica, fight whoever that is, go to Mexico, fight Mexican. You know, we can just take this on the road because it's that big. It's the world's biggest traveling circus, literally. <laughs> so it, it's, it's been a fairy tale mid end to mm -hmm. my career. You know, it started off and it was, it was good. I was all on ITV, I had nine fights in my first year and then it went a little bit drier and drier and drier and then the inactivity started and I was out for a long period of time and then it just went it just went from bad to worse and shit happens in life and it's a lesson for anybody, no matter what comes at you and how shit you feel and how you think you're in a dodgy place, then you never know what tomorrow will bring because I was out of boxing 
30 months, it's a long time. Um, and I didn't think I was gonna come back at any stage. I was very heavy. I look at myself on the videos last night. I was thinking like, wow, I'm even amazed how I come back. Shocking, really. Do you recognize yourself in those videos? No, I don't. Obviously I can see it's me, but a near on 30 stone man, it's ridiculous, isn't it? And that was only the, the weight issue. The, the rest mm. of it was an ongoing, it is an ongoing battle. All these fights that you've had, right? Which fight has meant the most to you so far? My biggest fight's always, and will always be, the mental health battle. That's the hardest one to defeat, and that's the ongoing struggle forever. The rest of them are boxing matches. They, they are what they are. I suppose winning the world title for the first time, that's a special one. And doing the trilogy with Wilder, that's also a special one. And even doing a trilogy with Derek, that's also a special one. They're all special because at every given time in my whole career, I've always said this is the most important fight in my career, no matter if it, even if it was a, a bum guy who I was supposed to beat. That was always the most important at that point, so now it's Ngannou, he's the most important fight in my career, and so on and so forth. So <clears throat> all of the fights were all very much um, as meaningful because without of all of those wins that I had, I won't be in this position today. From everybody, from my first fight, Bella John Yoshi, to my last one, Derek Chisora, they've all been as meaningful as the next one. Because without those victories, I definitely wouldn't be here today in this position on such a massive event. Look at that. Unbelievable. It's amazing. And, and look, as we talked about, there is Usyk looming as well. Now with that, does that change how you actually approach this fight? Are you going to be a bit more careful so you, you know, nothing happens or, or what? Listen, what I can say for now is, fuck Usek, forget about him. You don't, mm. He's just not important to me. Don't mm. exist at the moment. It's about that big fella there, six foot five, 20 stone, trying to knock my lights out. Now, I've used this analogy quite a bit. If I go to the local battle cruiser, and I have a few beers and a man gets cheeky and he draws it straight on me, he's gonna knock all my front teeth out. So what do you think a UFC absolute killer's gonna do if I let him hit me? I've sparred a lot of kickboxers and MMA fighters in Holland over the years, and I didn't have an easy time with any of them. And that's factual. They're all big, strong, brute guys. So I'm expecting a tough fight. Is it the riskiest fight of your career? Riskiest fight? He's a big, dangerous fellow, and they've all got the same, same chance. He's got the same chance as Dillian White had, Derek Chisora. They've all got the same chance, the puncher's chance. He probably hits as hard as them men. He's probably as talented as them men. But it's okay to lose to those guys. It's not okay to lose to any cunt. Nobody. <laughs> When's but, it been okay to lose? But in terms of, say, say like, say like you, you had your Dillian White, he's a boxer, right? So he knocks yeah. you out, okay, he, he landed it, he's a boxer. You lose to Ngannou. Doesn't what, make what any difference. They say about they're you? all bare bums in the showers, and they're all getting good items, that's it. <laughs> I, it's not acceptable, in my, in my opinion, to lose to anybody. It's just as bad to lose to any of them 35 boxers that I've fought already, as it is to this guy. Because losing's losing. And there's a very famous saying on Fast and Furious, if you win by an inch or a mile, winning is winning also. And I'll take victory over a loss any time, no matter how it comes. Whether you scrape a victory, you steal a victory, or is a victory easy? Victory is victory. What do you think you'll weigh for this fight? Well, I'll weigh, same as I always weigh for all my fights. Just under 19 stone, just around that, that somewhere. Is that sort of optimum fury weight now? Yeah, since I got into my 30s, around about 18, 12, 18, 10, is where I always aim to be. And although I've weighed in at 19, 11, 19, 10, for Wilder and that, that wasn't me weight on the morning of the fight, or the weigh-in rather. The morning of the weigh-in, I would always hit that weight of 18 stone 12. That's my target. And even on the fight day, I'll be around that weight anyway. But when you drink two gallons of water and you have three meals before you weigh in, you're gonna be heavier. But make no mistake, all of those fights have hit that target of 18 stone 12, 18, 11. We've seen in the Wilder fight, especially like the last two fights, you were able to just lean on him and you exhaust him and all of his energy. And you sometimes you're 50 pounds heavier than him. Now in Garnu, he's gonna be a big lump as well. Do you think you'll be able to physically dominate him inside the clinches? Or I think so, yeah. I don't think there's anyone can live with me at that, that um, battle game.
nobody. I've never ever met anybody who can actually. They all fall to pieces after around about six, seven rounds. Mm -hmm. The strongest, biggest, fattest men that I've ever fought or sparred with, when you leave them in there, round about six, seven rounds, they start falling to pieces looking for a way out. No matter how big or tough or strong they are, they always, um, they always come second best when it comes to trench warfare. I've heard you say you know you're going to beat him because his body's too good. Yeah. Tell me about that. A man who's built like him won't be able to beat me. He's got a six pack, he's ripped. I eat six packs for breakfast. <laughs> and that's what we do with him. The, uh, has he got a better chance uh, against you than Conor McGregor did against Floyd Mayweather? That, that seems to be the general kind of chat around I think around so, this. yes. I think he does have, because he's got obviously knockout power, this fellow. He's a big heavyweight, isn't he? So, mm -hmm. he'll, um, if he detonates on your jaw, you'll be uh, hurt. Whether he can finish a man or not, I've no idea. Here's the, here's the thing. Right, this man is supposed to be the hardest puncher in history, isn't he? Right. When he hit a pad that didn't move in front of him. Okay, great. Tommy, my brother Tommy, mm -hmm. can hit as hard as any heavyweight that you'll ever hit on the pads. Velocity, very hard. But yet he can't knock out KSI or Jake Paul because he doesn't have the experience to set the punch up. Do you understand where I'm coming from? Yeah. I actually lost a lot of money when Tommy fought Jake Paul. Because I bet 100% that this YouTuber is not gonna take Tommy's power. No way! Tommy hits me in the guts and hurts me. He hits very hard. When my body sparring, he hits me all up the arms and you're like, oh, my arms are sore. I'm thinking this YouTuber's not gonna be able to take this power. So I bet him heavily to win by knockout. And he won on points. Because it's an experience thing. If you're standing there and letting someone hit you, bang, 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 you're not moving anywhere, they're gonna hurt you. But when you've got to set it up behind an educated jab and trap somebody to let them walk onto something, they can't do that. Only the most experienced fighters can set somebody up and, and knock them out. Is it hard to prepare for someone like Ngarni though in no. terms of, but you don't know what he's gonna do, right? I do know what he's gonna do. What's Same as they all do. Big right hand over the top, hit the body. Hit a fat man's body or take his jaw off with a right hook. Same old cliche. There's only one thing they can do with me. They're not going to outbox me. That's a fact. Because I'm too big, too awkward and throw too many punches. Uh, so the only chance they have is to knock somebody out. And to knock me out, it's very difficult, as I've proved. It would seem that it, it's very difficult to, to knock me out. He says he wants to show the world he can box as well. Good. I hope he does. And I want to show the world I can wrestle. Do you think you'll try anything funky in there? I don't know. I don't know. You never know what a man will do when he's under pressure. Don't know. But I think he's a professional. He took it very seriously. He's been over here three weeks before. He's 100% um, in his mind he's going to win. So you have to take somebody like that serious. But when you get in the ring with somebody, things change. I've seen even the, the top prospects, top heavyweight contenders, top champions. As soon as they get in there and they, they move around with me for a couple of rounds, they realise, shit, this is hard. Uphill battle here, fucked. And that's it. So hopefully it'll be the same with him. Do you think you, you can disarm him quite early then? I think I'm going to knock him spark out. I saw you tell yeah. him that on the Carl Frampton thing. Yeah, I will. I can't, I'm going to miss him, size of him. He's got a head on him like a five gallon drum. <laughs> so, listen, it. like I said, Target practice, and that's what, I, what hopefully it'll be for me. I'll set him up, nice few jobs at the body, and walk him straight onto a big one. When he's trying to hit me with a big up, whap, short right hand, straight onto the jaw, game over. Do you think you can get any better now? Well, yeah. My, my biggest thing is activity. The more fights I have regularly, the better I am. The more inactivity I have, I win it on heart and guts alone. If you saw the second Wilder fight, I was coming off Wallin, Schwartz, a wrestling match, and a training yeah. camp, yeah? yeah? Four, four, four events back to back, and absolutely battered Wilder. Didn't land any punches, anything. I had nearly two years out of the ring for the, the trilogy, and look at, look at that, got nearly wiped off the canvas. You had to drag me off the floor, on guts and heart and alone, to win the fight, because 22 months out of the ring. So, inactivity killed the cat, and that's the fact. If you've got a young fighter who's had one fight all year, you've got another young fighter who's had six or seven, 
It's not hard to know who's going to win that fight on activity alone. But it doesn't happen every time, as we've seen. When Frank got Chisora five good wins on the spin mm -hmm. against top opposition, and I'd had one fight in two years, come out and still done him. But I am an exception to the rule. But usually, it's activity. The man who's active and match fit will win to a man who's been out there in years. It's very difficult to come back. That's why I'm the only heavyweight champion ever that's come back and didn't lose. Any lineal champion who came back from long retirement stints, they all got battered, every one of them, apart from me. And I almost got chin dinner, so I had to break that old uh, rule. On the lineal um, status, do you think you can beat Joe Lewis's record? Joe Lewis's record of 12 years. I'm the second longest reigning champion. You're catching up. Can you get it? 12 years is a long time, and I'm only on about seven and a half. So if you want to do 10 more fights, you... Maybe, but I'd like to do 10 fights in two years. Okay. Not 10 fights in 10 Frank's years. Frank's getting twitchy. I'm just, just... <laughs> yeah, if I'm going to do these big loads of fights, I want to rack them up quickly. I don't want to be waiting around. Like, this year, 11 months since the last four, like, I could have had at least two or three fights in this year alone. Mm -hmm. But one reason or another, these fights haven't happened. And here I am again. And when everybody thought it was over for me, and I was frozen out of the game, come back and took over it. That's what I do. Look, final one. Uh, Fabio Wardley, David Adelaide, wonderful fight uh, on yeah. your undercard, chief support. Give me your thoughts on that one. A very good fight. I think it's a real 50-50 fight. Um, champion, you know, he's a good fighter. You know, he didn't have much experience as an amateur and um, he makes a lot of mistakes, but he's very willing, very good puncher and he seems to, to win every time he gets hurt, which you can only ask of a fighter. Mm -hmm. I've seen him get hurt by Nathan Gorman, I've seen him get hurt by a few other fighters, hit, cut, whatever, and it seems like when you hit him really hard, he fires back and he knocks him out, so that's what you want to see from a young heavyweight coming up, and David, obviously, I've had Dave in my camp quite a lot for Wilder, most of the Wilder fights and other times as well, and he's always coming along uh, nicely, and he seems to be the same. When you hit David, it's, he, he wants to row as well. He wants to get you back. So that's why I think it's a very interesting, very interesting uh, British title fight. There's British Commonwealth as well, isn't it? British Commonwealth, WBA Continental, WBO European, there's a few. Yeah, there's a few on there. But the most important out of them is the British heavyweight title, I'd definitely say. Um, and it's a very prestigious belt to win, to be the, the Lord Longsdale Challenge belt holder. It's a... Um, it's definitely a prestigious belt. Um, for these two to be fighting for it, it's a, uh, it's a good, good time in their careers. I remember when I first won my Longsdale belt, it was a long time ago, I was only 22 years old. Baby, really, when I think about it. Um, and it was a very one of the best moments in my life. Because to be the British champion when you're British is a very, very prestigious honour. Tyson, pleasure speaking to you. I'm sure we'll catch up a lot more in fight week. Thank, Thank you. you. Cheers, mate. This is nice, isn't it? Yeah. I just wish we were somewhere with a little more action. Hey, Greg. You wish for a little more action? I do wish for more action, Mike. As you wish, Greg. We have such a nice time. Let's party! Just getting started. I sucker. Ready for a little more? <laughs> Is that all you got? Be careful what you wish for, Greg.
nice. You got two wishes left.